Hello there, I'm Chris, and I want to show you something interesting today in developer tools you might not be aware of. Now, if I go to any third party website, I can change things in there by clicking the inspect button and looking at the CSS and looking at the HTML. So in this case, I can go to the title bar here and I can see there's a background color of EEE, which I'm not too happy with. So let's set that to a nice purple or actually let's set it to a hot pink, which is always a cool thing to have. Now, this is great, and I didn't even have to know CSS to do that. But when I now reload the page, it's gone. My changes have not been applied because, of course, I didn't have access to the files. It loads them back from the web and it actually replaces what I've done. Now, what you can do, though, is an option called overrides in the sources tab. You might not see that like I do right now. If you're normally there, you click that button here and go to overrides. And overrides allow you to select a folder on your hard drive. So in this case, a local copy folder, which is also the one that I'm showing down here. Now, Developer Tools actually asks you to get access to that folder, which makes sense because browsers should not randomly create files on your hard drive. So if you allow it, you actually have a local copy folder now in your overrides and you can turn them off as well if you wanted to. Now, if you now go to the Elements pane and you click on the name of the elements, you can go to the editor in the browser, which is actually inside the browser all the time. There's a full editor in there. You might not be aware of that either. The problem is, though, that this CSS file is minified, so that's kind of hard to use. So you can click on that one here to format it and make it editable much simpler that way. So now if I save that one, I actually have it in my heart, on my hard drive. You can see it actually mimicked the whole folder of the MDN website, which I didn't know what it was like. And I could send that folder back to the MDN people once I'm done with my changes. Any file that is an override file gets this little dot here, so you know it's actually not coming from the live website. I could for, go, for example, to the body or something higher than there and start editing these things. I can also go to the elements pane again and actually do the change that I've done before on that header so i can go to inspect and i can change the, the header color going back to that one say it again to this wonderful hot pink and when i reload the page it will actually have kept that nice color in there because it's actually not coming from my uh, from the web anymore but it's coming from my machine so if i go to the title bar container i can see the color now in my vs code is like that and if i find it here as well i can go do a find actually because this is a really really big file here i can go to dot title bar container and i got the color here as well so if i now change this here to for example that blue and actually save it you will see that it changed here live in my vs code as well so these two things are connected you can actually override anything that you want to. The network pane has this uh, little error, uh, warning sign here as well now, showing that some files are actually not coming from your website anymore, but actually are coming from your local hard drive. So any, any of the files that you want to override, you can actually right click and say save for overrides and you get it there and then you can start editing it and saving it. And once you're done, you can zip this all up and mail it to the person of the third party website to see the changes. This has been in developer tools for quite a while, but it's not that documented. But luckily enough, I just documented it. So from tomorrow on, you can read up more about it.